Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture series of Basic Electrical Engineering. In this session, I will be discussing how do you produce three-phase voltage and current. Let us understand the method of producing three-phase voltage and current in this session. It works based on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Let's consider permanent magnet. One is at the North Pole, another is at South Pole. You know that the magnetic field is produced between North Pole and South Pole. That means the group of magnetic lines of force that is coming from North Pole and terminating to South Pole. The group of magnetic lines of force are generally called as magnetic flux. Therefore, magnetic flux travels from North Pole to South Pole. You must have studied the field mapping. Moving on to the second part. We have three coils. You can able to see the coil with the red color. It is denoted by C1. Then coil with yellow color. It is denoted by C2. And the coil with blue color. It is denoted with the letter C3. That means these are the three conductors. Also the angle between the conductor you can able to see. It is 120 degree apart. Also, the conductors are rotating at an angular speed of omega. Omega is the angular speed. Clear? According to Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, whenever a conductor is placed in a magnetic field, the magnetic field that is going to interact with that particular conductor, this results the changes in flux linkage. The changes in flux linkage create an EMF in this particular conductor. That means an EMF is induced inside the conductor. Suppose if the conductor is rotating, then what is going to happen? A dynamically induced EMF is going to generate in each conductor. That is according to Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Also we can able to write E is directly proportional to N into d5 by dt. That, that equation you have already familiar. I have explained that particular Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction in my previous class. So this is the way how to produce the three phase voltage and current. If the circuit is closed, obviously the current starts flowing. And it is similar to single phase AC generation. But the thing is here we are using three coil which are kept 120 degree apart. That is only the difference. Also there are changes in the waveforms. We will have a brief discussion on the remaining part. So the explanation is already given. According to Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, we know that whenever a coil rotated in a magnetic field, there is a sinusoidal induced EMF in the coil. That means there is a dynamically induced EMF which is produced in the coil. Now we consider the three coil like C1 at R phase, C2 at Y phase and C3 at a blue phase which are displaced at an angle of 120 degree. The coils are rotating in the uniform magnetic field. I already mentioned there, which produced the north and south poles in the counterclockwise direction with a constant angular velocity omega. According to Faraday's law, an EMF is induced in the three coil. The EMF induced in the three coils will have phase difference of 120 degree apart. If the induced EMF in the coil C1 has a, a phase of 0 degree, then obviously the induced EMF in the coil C2 uh, lacks C1 at an angle of 120 degree. Also C3 lacks C2 by 120 degree. Already mentioned that uh, all these three coils are apart at an angle of 120 degree. So this is actually the working of this particular system. Alright. So you can able to note down these points in your notebook and orally you can able to explain how to produce three phase voltage and current. Once the circuit is closed of course the current starts flowing. As you can able to see, the, the sinusoidal waveforms are generated at each conductor. So at R line or R conductor, ER is equal to EM sin omega t. This is an induced EMF generated at the coil C1. If I talk about the coil C2, the produced EMF is or induced EMF EY that is given by EM sin omega t minus 120 degree. If I talk about the blue line or you can third line that means C3. EB is equal to EM sin omega t minus 240. So these are the induced EMF which are generated at each conductor or each coil. 
all are 120 degree apart. Now it is the phase angle is 0, here it is 120, these two, that phase angle difference between these two also oh, 120 degree. If you want you can able to represent in a phasor diagram. So we can able to represent like ER, EB and EY. These are the maximum voltage. ER, okay, maximum voltage. Now the angle between ER and EY is 120 degree where the angle between EY and EB will be 120 degree and EB and ER should be 120 degree. Mathematically, we can able to represent ER is equal to EM sin omega t. That means EM of produced at the R conductor where EY is equal to EM sin omega t minus 120 degree. Why minus 120 degree? Because there is a phase shift of 120 degree. Third one you can read EB is equal to EM sin omega t minus 240 degree. That means the angle between EY and EB again should be 120 degree apart. Or else I can write EB is equal to EM sin omega t plus 120 degree as well. That is also acceptable. Okay. So this is regarding the generation of three phase voltage and current. So ER, EY, EB that is known as phase sequence. I will let you know what is phase sequence in the coming session. In this video, I discussed how to produce three phase voltage and current. You can apply Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Then you need to speak about the alignment of three conductors. What is a phase shift? What is a phase displacement? And how to produce the EMF? And what are the EMF equation corresponding to each coil? I have referred the following textbook to gather the information. Let me know if you are having any questions regarding this topic. Thank you for watching this video. In the coming session, I will be discussing the important terminologies which are using in 3-phase system. Thanks again. Have a good day.